Hello Year 5, we're going to continue our learning on the Iron Age. Make sure you've got your pen, pencil and exercise book ready with you. We're going to begin the lesson like we normally would with a knowing more, remembering more activity. I will read the question and you need to make sure that you write your answer on your piece of paper. Number one. Iron Age people believed in God and were Christian. Do you think that is true or false? Number two, what is a votive offering? So think back to your learning from last week. A farming settlement to produce food, a special place to worship the gods, a gift made to the gods or a burial practice. Number three, list two special places for Iron Age people. And number four, what kind of items were used as votive offerings? Now on the next slide, it will reveal the answers. So make sure that you are either giving yourself a tick or a bullet point and making your corrections. Now remember, as you go through the video, at different points, you might need to pause it in order to write your answers down. If you need to go back, then of course you can go back on the video. So number one, Iron Age people believed in God and were Christian. This is false. They believed in gods such as gods of nature. Number two, what is a votive offering? A votive offering is a gift made to the gods. Number three, list two special places for Iron Age people. Now you could have had lakes, woodland, open space. What kind of items were used as votive offerings? Now remember, these were valuable items. So for example, value metal objects or highly decorated weapons, shields and jewellery. So now if you look at your knowledge organiser, you will see that the vocabulary that we're going to be focusing on today is tribe, a group of people that share the same language, social customs and ancestors. Celtic, Iron Age people were often called the Celts. The Celts were made up of different tribes, not just one large group. When we're discussing conflict, we're thinking about a fight, a battle or a war. Key places that we're going to be looking at. Maiden Castle in Dorset, one of the largest and most complex Iron Age hill forts in England. In use for over 400 years, the high earth walls and deep ditches were built to defend from enemy attack. Danbury Hill, Hampshire, was surrounded by smaller farming villages. This hill fort was used as a central location for trade. It could house 200 to 350 people during times of conflict. And if you look down now at the timeline, you'll see in 450 BC, Maiden Castle expanded with complex defences added. So I want you to make sure that you're repeating the vocabulary at home. So key words that you know, Iron Age, archaeology, Evidence. Key words that you will meet. Ramparts. Hill fort. Defence. Conflict. Now I want you to think back to last half term and make notes in your exercise book. So this is a point where you might find you now need to pause. So where did Bronze Age people live? So think about where they lived and also thinking about how their houses were made. Now we're going to think about an Iron Age settlement. So Maiden Castle in Dorset, England, an Iron Age settlement and a high hill overlooking the surrounding area. The settlement is surrounded by large earth banks called ramparts and deep ditches dug into the ground. So have a think to yourself, why would you live on a high hill and surround yourself with ramparts? So looking carefully now at 
the picture here where you can see those ramparts and those ditches that have been dug into the ground. And again, pause the video here and bullet point your answers. So now you've got a picture of an Iron Age settlement. Have a think to yourself, how many people do you think lived inside this hill fort? We had a clue there when we looked at our knowledge organiser. So now you're going to have a video where you're going to learn a little bit more about these settlements. Now, if for any reason it's on your system and it doesn't play, the link is at the bottom so you can still pause the recording and put that into your web browser. So now make sure you've got hill forts as a heading and as you go through you can pause and you can make your notes. This is Mabel Castle. At this time people in Britain lived in tribes but as land began to be used up tribes started to fight each other so some built hill forts to defend their territory. So now you've discovered how the Iron Age people lived in their settlements on a hill fall in order to protect themselves. The first hill forts were constructed from around 800 BC and constructing a hill fort would have required organisation, manual skills, labour and leaders. 
These were defended settlements that made use of the natural rises in the landscape for defensive advantage. So think about if they have those natural rises and they could look over and down at people, they could see if any other tribes were coming to attack. Between 500 and 100 BC, many parts of Britain were dominated by hill forts, with settlements providing homes to hundreds of people. And now remember, we've discovered now that Maiden Castle is one of the largest hill forts that existed in Europe. So what do you notice about the entrance to the castle? So we're looking now around here. What do you notice? That's right, the pathways were narrow so only a few people could travel through at once. There were only two gateways, almost like watchtowers, and were doors which could be closed and defended. The ramparts are like a maze, making it difficult and time consuming to travel through. So again, it's putting people off of attacking. The archaeologists found evidence of 73 roundhouses, 500 rectangular buildings and thousands of deep storage pits. Other archaeological finds include more than 180,000 pieces of pottery, stone objects and many iron and bronze artefacts. What does this evidence tell us about life at Danebury Hill? And again, you can bullet point your answers now in your exercise book. That's right. It suggests normal everyday Iron Age life, cooking, making objects and using tools. Over time, the people living in Danebury built more and more earth ramparts and dug ditches. So we got early Danebury as we moved into the middle period of its, and then late Danebury. Why would they need more ramparts and ditches? Pause the video and make your notes. Archaeologists believe the ramparts and ditches made it more difficult to attack. If you are defending your home, this suggests you have or think you will be attacked. So as time went on, they became, the conflict looks like it may have got greater, so they found ways to protect themselves better. Now, damaged skulls found at Danbury suggest weapon damage. Archaeologists also found mass burial pits where over 200 people have been buried. Archaeologists believe these bones, the defensive ramparts and the many weapons found indicate evidence of conflict, so of battle. Now, in a moment, you're going to pause again and you're going to watch the video. Now, as you're watching, make sure you write down some notes in your exercise book. Be thinking, what weapons would Iron Age people use during conflicts? What was kept in the centre of the hill fort? What did the Iron Age people bring inside the hill fort during conflict? Found several 
remember if you need to you can go back and watch the video again in order to make sure you've answered your questions archaeologists have found many examples of iron age weapons swords spearheads axes what does finding weapons suggest and what purposes could weapons have pause now and bullet point your answers Excellent, that's right. A lot of weapons suggest conflict, but weapons don't always mean fighting. They could also show how they relied on hunting to source their food. Axes can also be used to cut down trees. Arrowheads can shoot down birds. So why did Iron Age people fight? Look carefully at the artist's representation of tribes at war in Danebury. What can you see happening? What might the tribes be fighting for? What might they want? Could there be things on the land that they need? Look carefully at the weapons that they use. Look at the chariots that we looked at last week. They might have wanted the grain, iron or other metal. They might have wanted to take over the land so they had it for farming. There could have been a tribal dispute, so an argument between the tribes. 
they might have wanted some any other resources that they had on the land that they needed. So what you're going to do now for your independent task, and remember, you can go back to the video as you work through this activity. You're going to select the three most important pieces of evidence for conflict in the Iron Age and explain how does the evidence tell us about conflict in the Iron Age. And your challenge is going to be what would have caused fighting between the tribes. So thinking back to about what we found out in our videos and also what we found out in the last slide. Now, if you need a little bit of guidance, you could choose from ramparts, damaged skulls, heel forts, weapons, and mass burials. We've got some thinking prompts and sentence frames and a word bank. And we've got Maiden Castle and Danebury. So what happened in the Iron Age that was unsafe? The Iron Age was sometimes unsafe because, what evidence do we have for this? Archaeologists know this because they found, and again, use the images above to help you. Explain what the evidence tells us. This tells us, and again, think about what we found out in all of the slides. When we look at a piece of evidence, we're really analysing it. We're becoming historians and we're really thinking about what does it tell us about that period of time. So now what I would like you to do is you're going to go on with your learning. Go back to the notes that you've made if you need to. Go back to the video and go through the slides if you need to. Well done, Year 3.